kind of suck at narration, so I'm just going to kind of walk around here and then point stuff out. <clears throat> this is my veggie oil processing walkthrough of my uh, filtering setup. Kind of a disheveled mess right now. Uh, it's in the transition phase of cleaning out some of this crap to make it all vegetable oil related in this nice garage here. So uh, feeds from this top tote up here, just gravity fed. I got it jacked up a little bit here on uh, some some uh, six or yeah six by sixes. This is a uh, this was a free water bed heater that I put underneath it here to help in the winter time with keeping things warm and also keeps everything flowing at about the same speed. It keeps this right above as it's exiting out of the uh, top tote here. It keeps it all about the same temperature. Helps break up some of the, the, the clumps that happen from colder oil. Gravity feeds down here. Have my pipe bomb style heater with a stainless steel uh, element up inside of here. Uh, this heater is going on six, no, five years old now. Um, everything inside is coated with 415. Uh, the last time I opened it up, the 415 has been holding up perfectly. About the only thing that I had to open it up for was to clean out the three or four years worth of crap that had built up at the bottom here. I was actually having problems with my uh, flows stopping because there was so much crap built up in here because I have no way of draining out the very bottom. So I had to take a, take the part of the bottom and flush it all out. But I figure it's a small price to pay for every four to five years of having to clean it out. Um, this controls my flow down here. This is my drain into this bucket down here with my overflow. Uh, in five years of running, I've never had an issue with electricity being knocked out or anything like that, so I've gone down to this small bucket. Um, I do plan on putting a barrel in here, sliding one back inside of here. That way, at the rate that I run, it should be about six to seven hours minimum um, before the barrel would fill up if there were a power problem. And I usually check this thing every every eight hours or so at the, at the, at the very outside. So, plus I walk by it all, all the time during the day, so I, 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 I'd know if it wasn't running. You can hear it outside. Uh, right now I've got it kind of quiet. I just put a paper towel over the fan to make it kind of silent so that I could video this. Um, got my Ranco electronic temperature controller here. I don't know that you can see that. Let me block the, uh, the flash on my, my phone here. I set it for 160. It cycles through about 147 through 170 back and forth. Runs to a stainless steel thermo well right here. Um, all the fittings, this fitting here, this stuff all has been coated with 415. The only stuff that I have in here that's not is this brass here and the brass here. Um, and then these, these little air fittings I used because they were convenient size for the hose. Um, my only place that I use stainless or uh, braided hose is right here and this lasts about a year before it starts to dry out and get kind of crispy. So I just replaced that. Um, you can see my drain for my dirty oil when I shut down come out here. Um, let's see here. So it goes in, feeds into the center. I have the WO Designs centrifuge. I was one of the first ones, one of the first units that, they, that were put out. Um, feeds into the center, I have the, the booster cone. Uh, Leon hooked me up with uh, a new bowl for the booster cone. Thank you much. Um, when I did this, uh, three years ago, I put the booster cone in there. I, originally, I had built my own uh, kind of feed cone system, and then he came out with his, and I, his is much better than what I had done. Um, so I've been running that. This is a uh, vent going outside. You can see the condensation, or you should be able to see the condensation. You can see the condensation running down there. This other one right here is hooked up to this fan, to the this funnel, which is coming off the fan from my motor. Uh, I'm running a three-phase motor. Upgraded it myself with a Automation Direct controller. I'm running it at 50, uh, at 5,000 RPM right now. I've had an issue with my the bearings in the bottom there. I've 
actually it's it wore out the wore out, uh, space at the bottom, so I have a shim in there. And if I try to go over 5,000 RPMs, it starts to it starts that shim starts to kind of get knocked loose. So I don't go past that. Um, I do have a replacement motor here, but I've just been too lazy to actually install it. Um, hoping that at some point I can find somebody with a machine shop to uh, mill out the bottom plate of this one for me and. Uh, made it so that I could put a, like a spacer in there to put, it, put the bearing back in and have it nice and tight. Um, normally run anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 on a regular basis. I got my handy chart that I made up here which is available up on uh, a, a bunch of different forums for how fast you run. This chart, um, I usually try to run right about oh, 35 seconds or so per cup. It gives me about six and a half gallon or 6.4 ga gallons per hour, and of course there's a little fluctuation there, um, but that seems to be my my preferred speed for single pass dewatering while at the same time making sure that it still passes through a uh, a one micron absolute bag when I when I push it through that. Um, so then the oil's coming out down here. You can see it running right now. Kind of loops around down here to keep this this uh, lower loop here is real important to have a uh, to keep the air from the centrifuge from blowing the oil out and making it splash and all that kind of stuff. Only place I want air moving is going out here and coming in here to kind of keep the the condensation that that happens inside going on its way out. And that vents right through the outside of my little thing here. I don't think you can see the missed out through my shitty old ass windows, but it's there. Um, mounted up to the vibration mounts on my little handy dandy wood table that I built. Although the mounts now aren't even really necessary because the bowl is balanced and doesn't have an issue. Uh, most of my bearing wear happened when I had my old bowl that was the sand cast bowl that was not really balanced and I've just been running the same motor since. Like I said, I have a spare that I've purchased for, I think $50 for a used motor that's perfectly fine. And, you know, if this one gets any worse, I'll, I'll swap it out, or if I get real ambitious one day, I'll change it out. Down here for a little, little weight to the bottom to keep this thing nice and stable and not let me move it around or anything like that, since it's balanced and level and all that. Got a bunch of old batteries. Uh, so, feed it from here into my clean tote. Very critical to keep your clean tote. Uh, I probably shouldn't turn the camera. Keep your clean tote, if you're feeding from tote to tote, accessible, not having something stacked on top of it. My original setup I had way back when, I had the uh, dirty tote stacked on top of the clean tote with the same spacers. And in the learning process, I found that, wow, I ran some oil too fast, so then I had the dirty tote, or the clean tote underneath, had some sediment at the bottom, and every time I would run a batch of oil, I would keep getting the sediment stirred up a little bit, and it took a while for that to clean out, so then I fi finally stopped using that and came up with this setup, um, or this, this way of doing it. Running right now to... Like I said, about six, six point four gallons an hour. Just started it up recently. That's about the size of the flow. I've gotten pretty good at judging about how fast it is based on the the size of the flow coming out of the end of the pipe. So I can adjust my speed, and then I come over and I test with my cheap ninety nine cent timer, my measuring cup, and my uh, tray from the printers where I used to work that catches the old toner. Um, usually cover up this guy when he's when he's running so that no flies get in there because I'm tired of having flies in there. You see our WBO Designs pump in the back, background there. Moves oil wicked fast. Um, something else that helps out when I'm trying to get all the oil out of the, uh, the, the clean tote is a ratchet strap to lift it up instead of trying to lift it up and tip in, wedge something in there, especially since it's kind of constrained. Then we got some clean oil over here, some more there. That's clean oil down there. That's going to be added into the, when I get around to building a cart for bag filtering from when it's clean oil before we put it in storage. Said so that's dirty up there. 
And these two 330s are gonna get the lightest oil put in it for the winter. Uh, we're gonna have two more over on this side. So we'll have, uh, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be 330 times four, so that's like 1,300 something odd gallons. And that will be all the oil from, like they say, the top 200 gallons of each tote will be pulled off and put in there since those will be, since if these have been sitting. This, is, this has been sitting for about two months after it got done and you can see that got the little bit of a creamy layer at the bottom. What I figure is I'll pull off the top two thirds of the tote out of each one of these totes that have been sitting for a while, giving them a chance to let the, the heavier stuff that's been centrifuged settle. That way I'll have oil that's the thinnest oil, at least in my, I theorize or think that it's going to be the thinnest oil in the 330s for the winter use. It'll require less work and all that stuff, plus it'll be easier to heat up a 330. Heat up the 330 worth of oil in one shot over the course of a weekend to fill up my tank, or fill up tanks in general. Um, the plan is here to have the, the, the couple more 330s in the back and then do two 275s, two 275s, two more 275s, and then probably one more 275 up front here for like a kind of a transfer of oil from outside, because we keep the, the dirty oil sitting outside or on the side of the building, transfer it from outside to inside um, to get 275 gallons because we leave the last 75, 75 gallons or so at the bottom of the tote where all the goop is settled to as much as it can. And then we combine all that together and let that set again for, you know, say two or three months in the spring, summer, fall to consolidate down, get the clean oil off that, and then finally, you know, when we get enough, we'll run a, a whole batch of goop a couple times to get it clean and dry. Um, so that's pretty much the whole system here. I mean, uh, this is my probably fourth incarnation of a centrifuge setup. Um, using my WVO designs. This is all my the original little stuff that I had, and it's just been moved from play, point to point. Learn something new every time you do it. Um, learn what not to do, via spills and all that kind of stuff. And I think I've pretty much got it refined down that it's almost idiot proof. Uh, I would say that about every eight hours I check it for the speed because the head pressure from the top drops. I adjust it, I tweak it a little bit. I spend maybe five minutes every eight hours or so. It, if, it runs, if it runs longer than eight hours, say 10 hours, 12 hours, I'm not really hurting anything because the speed just slows down. So it's fine until it gets down to like two gallons an hour. So, you know, yeah, it might take a couple extra hours to run the whole batch, but in the end, it's not gonna hurt nothing going slower. I mean, slower is, technically better, I would think. Um, the more time it spends in the bowl, the better. I normally go about, what is it, 12,000 to 15,000 miles on my Davco 382 filters on my truck. And I, don't, I change them just because it's been a year or I never change it based on the miles. I just change it based on, hey, every July I change it. That's just when I have decided that it's time to change the filter. Um, regardless of whether it needs it or not. I never have any issues with that. So, oil comes out pretty clean. About the only thing I'd like to do is uh, get my big trade size one thing here set up on a cart with the pump and all that kind of stuff so that I can push through some bags uh, on the way into storage. I had a, a trade size three housing, but I lost the basket and haven't been using it. Got this, and now I want to mount it onto a cart so that I can wheel it around, because the thing is, it's carbon steel, weighs a ton, and, well, with that pump up there, I need the size of the filter bag in that. I really wanted to get a trade size two, the, uh, the big tall one, the 30-something odd inch one, but uh, it just didn't happen. I couldn't find one at the right price, so this was the, uh, the, the right deal here. So that's gonna get done up here, and then, when oil gets done over here in the uh, the clean tote, it's going to get pushed through the bag into a storage tote to sit for however long we wait to use it. Um, right now we're sitting on, uh, I think, 7,000 gallons of oil that needs to be run. Um, a little backlogged, you could say.